Today I've got the tea, we're talking best-selling products at Sephora that I hate. Doesn't mean that they're bad products at all. If you love them, I'm jealous. These are products that have so much hype, that are top rated, that I just could not get to work for me. If you're new here, hey, I'm Kate. I like to look at beauty products through a somewhat critical lens to help you save money and to help myself maintain a somewhat minimal collection for a YouTuber. If that sounds like your thing, I hope you'll subscribe and let's do this. The first best-selling product that I don't like is the K18 hair mask. I have friends who've had miraculous results with this product. Some of them told me, follow the instructions to a T. Other people said, no, 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 you gotta do this, you gotta do that, and I did it all. I tried it every which way I possibly could, and I just felt absolutely zero difference on my hair. It wasn't better, it wasn't worse, just kind of felt like a waste of money. So maybe it just depends on your hair type, or maybe there's just a certain way that I could have used it better for my hair. But I will say I have been using a similar product that just launched from Living Proof. So I'm gonna continue to use that one, but K18 was sadly a miss. And I will leave a link on the screen above where I did an Instagram reel, and I think a YouTube shorts as well, reviewing the K18 mask and showing you that I really didn't have any results. Next, we have the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. When these first launched, I went like feral for them. I love lip products that are like melty liquid lip balms that are high shine and sheer in color. Mm, that's my sweet spot. But when I tried these, I was absolutely horrified. It was like the most intense menthol scent and taste I had ever tried in a lip product. And the menthol in that just dried my lips up so badly. And there was also a lot of glitter in the formula, or at least in the shade that I got, and it was so gritty on the lips. And to top it all off, the formula was really thin and slippery, so I found that it was just really getting in my mouth and my throat. Did not make for a good experience, but I know so many people who love them. So if you like a really juicy lip, you don't mind menthol, and you like more lightweight formulas, it might be something that works out for you. Next we have the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. This product has been raved about for years as being totally clear and invisible, weightless on the skin, you know, universally flattering for everybody, and I just did not have that experience. I found the formula to be so slippery, I felt like I couldn't even get makeup to stick on it. That silicone slip of the formula just made my face feel really dirty, and it also kind of made me look a little bit greasy, so was not the vibe. A product I used to use on my channel, but I realized I really don't like, are the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. I know, it's weird. I've used them in so many videos, especially back in 2019 when I started my channel. The metallic shades are just so sheer, and the formula is really glidey, really slippery. And so I would put it on my lids, and I would just keep building, 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 and I would find that it would just kind of slip and fade away. It was a kind of formula that was so blendable, it was almost too blendable. The mattes were really pretty. I did feel like those were more smooth, they had more of an even pigmentation, more of like a medium pigment, but the metallics were just so sheer, really patchy when you try to build them up. I can't believe I used to use them because now it's like so clear to me that they're not the kind of product that does the work for you. The next product is something that people on YouTube recommend to me constantly and it's the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Bombs. People are always in the comments telling me that I need to try the Summer Fridays Lip Bombs and I have, I just really don't like them. I didn't find them to do anything for my lips. They didn't feel particularly nourishing or occlusive. They didn't feel really hydrating. They had a really lovely scent and I thought that they were beautiful and juicy, um, but they were really thin and slippery, you know? When I want a lip balm, I want something that's gonna stay and it's gonna form a barrier, really lock in hydration and prevent any water loss. For me personally, the thicker the lip balm, the better. So unfortunately, you will not be seeing the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Bombs on my channel anytime soon. But I totally understand why people like them. The next one might ruffle a few little feathers. It's the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Blush in Flirtatious. I cannot argue that the formula is beautiful. It was even, it was sheer but easy to build totally get why everyone loves that formula so much. For ages, people were telling me I had to buy the shade Flirtatious. It would be my perfect, like, no makeup makeup look, my perfect go with everything blush. I bought it, I tried it a few times. I'll leave a link on the screen above where you can see me review that product, but it just didn't show up on my skin. And I'm like pretty damn pale. I would have to layer it four times to get the color that I wanted, and then it would fade from my face in about an hour. I always found myself 
going in with a different blush after I applied that one. So I think it's just a shade issue for me, but I went back to Sephora and I swatched the other shades and I really just didn't see anything that I liked because the shades that were a little bit more medium were really, really warm and peachy. And then the really bright shades were super, super pigmented so that they would show up on deep skin. So sadly, I don't think there's a color for me in that range, but I may have to go back and swatch in person because that formula was super beautiful. Another best-selling product I really don't like is the Youth to the People Superfood Antioxidant Cleanser. I used that cleanser for like two months before I realized I didn't like it. And I am not picky with cleansers. I'm like, okay, does it irritate me? No, we're good. But with that one, I really did notice that my barrier for that whole two months seemed to be a little bit off. And when I asked some of my influencer friends about it, they were like, yeah, that cleanser is just not the one. So I ended up experiencing a lot of other Youth to the People products that are fantastic. I love their Super Clay Purify and Clear Mask. That is like a top five Holy Grail skincare product. And their Polypeptide 1 to 1 cream is also a top five moisturizer for me. So there are other products from the brand that I absolutely love. Sadly, that one just didn't work out. The next ones I debated on sharing because I really like this brand. I really like the people behind this brand, but I've tried every single product from the brand and only one of them has worked for me. Sadly, Tower 28 products in general just don't work with my skin type and my preferences. So the first product are their lip jellies. One of my first ever videos was on Tower 28 back when they only had a cream blush and some lip jellies and I was ruthless, <laughs> too ruthless. <laughs> but I stand by what I said, you know, those lip jellies were just so thin and slippery. They were getting outside my lip lines. I didn't feel that they were nourishing at all. The pigment would kind of settle into my lip lines and I would feel that the formula was getting into my mouth. I don't know. Maybe I have really weird shaped lips. Maybe it's me. You never know. But I also really don't like the scent of the lip jellies. They say that they have a beachy scent, which normally to me would be like, okay, coconut. But it's like coconut with something else, like coconut and salt water. It's just, it's not a very pleasant experience for me, which sucks because their colors are phenomenal. Like those sheer bright popsicle kind of shades. Oh, they're so me. And the milky ones that they came out with look really beautiful too. I just wish that they would come out with a lip formula with the same colors that are more occlusive and a little bit more nourishing. And with the cream blush, God, I wish I could get those to work for me. The colors that Tower 28 creates like light a fire in my soul. The shades Power Hour, Happy Hour, Magic Hour, so many of their blush colors are like exactly what I would wanna wear on a daily basis. But sadly, I have the kind of skin where my face just eats cream blush. So when I use a cream blush, I have to set it with a powder blush. And at that point, it's like, well, why not just use the powder blush in the first place? So for me, when I use a cream blush, it's really just because I like the experience of a cream blush or I only am gonna be wearing makeup for like an hour. And I just felt like with the Tower 28 cream formula, it was so dewy and it was really sticky and bomb-like. And so when I applied it, I felt like it lifted up my foundation and concealer a little bit, which isn't really flattering. It's very much more of like a girl on the go, not wearing foundation, like tap on just a couple dots with my fingers and I'm good kind of vibe. And that's not really how I apply makeup or wear makeup. Same thing with the bronzers as well. That has basically the same formula as the cream blush, just with um, some like micro shimmer in it. The shade that Tower 28 sent me did not show up on my face whatsoever. I'll link a video on the screen where I tried that. The lightest shade just completely disappeared on my skin and just left me looking like I had a wet face. And when it comes to a formula that I'm gonna be wearing all over my face, or at least on like my forehead, cheekbones, nose, jawline, I don't want a formula that's like a tacky, sticky thing. I don't want my hair sticking in my face. I want something that's really gonna set down to just a natural satin finish. But Tower 28 has a great team. They didn't give up there. They sent me the Sunny Days Tinted Moisturizer Sunscreen. Even though I have really dehydrated skin, when I'm wearing makeup, I get really oily in my T-zone, so I have to go for products that have a satin or a satin matte finish. And the tinted sunscreen was so, so, so dewy when I wore it. It just made my skin look wet. I don't think that wet looking skin is very flattering. I was super bummed because so many people love it. I loved the shade range and the concept behind the product, but it just didn't work for me. The Tower 28 mascara, oh. 
Everybody loves this. All my friends love this. They look amazing in this mascara. I was so excited when Tower 28 told me they were sending it to me. I tried it on camera. I'll, I'll leave the video linked above. It just made my lashes look so flat. I can't remember if it flaked or smudged. I think it smudged a little bit. It just, it didn't perform like my tubing mascaras, like the Thrive Mascara or the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. But their lip liner is like, Top five, all time favorite lip liner. The shade Work of Art is a daily staple for me. You can wear them on the lips, the cheeks, the eyes. They're incredible. I hope they launch more shades because it's truly a perfect formula. A product I have tried so many times over so many years is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I just do not get the hype. It feels like every professional makeup artist under the sun uses this product on their models. They just add like a tiny dot under the eyes and blend it out with a brush and it looks like no makeup, it just looks like they have perfect skin, but it covers really well, it looks moisturizing, it has a natural finish, but when I wear it, my dark circles come through so strongly and it makes my eyes look so dry. I don't get it, I'm like, am I cursed with terrible under eyes? Is it me? Is it the concealer? Am I using it wrong? I've tried it with a little buffing brush, I've tried it with a sponge, I've tried it with fingers, I've tried with different products underneath, I just, cannot get it to work. Another product that is so hyped that I just can't stand is the Merit Complexion Stick. It made my skin look so bad. It like created texture on my face I didn't even know I had. It, it, it was just a nightmare. It looked so bad on me. Something about that complexion stick just really did not work with my skin. And I've actually tried a lot of different foundation sticks over the years and I thought that they worked really beautifully for me. So I don't know what it was about that one. It just did not work. I'm genuinely scared to share the next one because everybody loves it. It's the Fenty Gloss Bomb. Just doesn't work for me. You know, the original Gloss Bomb formula, the like lip luminizer shade, it was really thin and slippery. I could feel it like getting in my mouth because I was tasting whatever that artificial perfume was and I really didn't like it but the glitter felt really gritty to me. Like it was thin, it was slippery, it was gritty. I just didn't get it. I also tried the Fenty Gloss Bomb Heat Formula. No surprises there that it didn't work out for me. Anything like really plumping, heating, or cooling generally will just make my lips feel really irritated or dried out. Maybe that cream formula would be different, but I think it's still that same kind of thinner consistency, not really gonna work for me. We can also add to the list the Fenty Ease Drops. I do have a review on my channel from ages ago. And what that video made me realize is my skin does not get along with any product that comes in a dropper. I was so jealous of everyone that looked good in the Fenty Ease Drops because from afar, like on camera, it made me look amazing. It was like, natural finish, natural coverage, but buildable, but skin-like. It was beautiful, but up close, it was a texture nightmare. Another product that's a bestseller on Sephora that I could not get off my face fast enough was the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. A few years ago, people were raving about that product and I thought everybody was insane. It was so thick and heavy and oily on the skin. It was like the opposite of anything that I wanna wear on my face. So you're sensing some themes here. <laughs> like I don't like any products that make my skin look wet or feel really greasy or sticky. Sadly, the Ilia Skin Tint did that for me. Another product I have purchased so many times that I have vowed to stop purchasing are the Dior lip glows. I just love the way that Dior does color. I ran out and got the Dior lip glow in mahogany last winter. I also loved and used the original pink lip glow formula for years, back like way before I was a YouTuber. And that was like the only kind of sheer flush of a pink lip balm that you could find. And every time I wore it, I thought I looked really good, but it felt so drying on my lips. And I remember that they did change the formula and they updated it to be more nourishing, but I couldn't tell a difference. Peppermint really dries my lips out, so maybe that's what it was doing for me. But it's such a shame because they have so many beautiful colors and they look good on everyone, but sadly, not the product for me. Another best-selling product on Sephora that I see influencers using constantly are the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. I've tried five products from Rare Beauty and only one of them worked out for me, sadly. The liquid blushes are so pigmented that I ended up having to do 
way more work trying to shear them out than I would if I just used a more sheer product and tried to build it up. But that's a great thing for some people. If you have deeper skin, then this is probably a huge thing to see in the market for you. I'm the kind of girl who likes to slap on makeup. I want products to do the work for me. I wanna be able to apply them like half in the dark with like one of my eyes closed, like barely awake and know that I'm gonna look good. And so if I have to be really careful about how much product I apply, not gonna work. They're Stay Glossy Lip Balms. So many people ask me to try those because they think that I'll love them. And yes, I thought the formula was fantastic, but those had a really, really soapy taste. I think I'm gonna run out of links that I can share on the screen. If I can, I'm gonna link my liquid lip balm video where I think I reviewed 28 liquid lip balms from all different price ranges. One of my favorite videos still that I've ever filmed and the rare beauty glossy lip balm things are in that video. I feel like people are gonna hate me for this one. I really did not enjoy the Danessa Myricks color fix foils. The color fixes, not the foiled one, the color fixes themselves are beautiful, you know, uber pigmented. They'll last you your whole lifetime, although they do kind of dry up a little bit. But the foils have this kind of jelly-like formula with glitter suspended in it. And I just found it to be impossible to work with. Like it was so patchy, you could not get any kind of metallic look. You, you would have to go into it wanting a super textured, really patchy, sparse look. And that's not really me. That's someone who likes more editorial looks. At the same time, I don't have the best eyeshadow skills, so I can totally recognize that it's possibly a user error. But again, I want products that are gonna do the work for me, products that I really don't have to try hard with. So that one just was not a fave. And lastly, <laughs> I just have a brand that does not work for me. Amika products have been so heavily pushed by influencers over the past few years. I've found that they have kind of tapered back on that, or frankly, I've probably just unfollowed all the influencers who constantly push their products. And so the relationship I had with Amika as a brand was really negative because I would just see influencers constantly posting about their new launches, constantly posting about the same products over and over again with nothing new to say and no real enthusiasm. It really left a bad taste in my mouth for the brand. But when I tried the products, I was just really bummed that they're super heavily fragranced. I tried a dry shampoo, a texturizing spray, I think some kind of volumizing product, and they were just so heavily fragranced that I had to wash them out. It was like, I couldn't even go about my day with that in my hair. And I've had similar experiences with products from Way, Kristen S, Dry Bar, and Living Proof. Luckily, Living Proof did reformulate a lot of their products and made them a little bit less fragrance, but Amika, Way, and Dry Bar, woof, real fragranced. Instead, I find that I can really rely on Bumble and Bumble, Verb, Briogeo, Florane, and then a bunch of different fragrance-free lines. I have a huge list of products that didn't work out for me. So let me know in the comment section if you wanna see a part two. And if you like this video, please click the like button so that I know to create more content like this. If you made it this far, thanks so much for being here. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one.